riddled with tall tales. The facts of Daniel Boone's life can be hard to discern from folklore and legends, but one thing is certain, we know where he lived. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the many homes of Daniel Boone as he pioneered the frontier. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. Squire Boone, Daniel Boone's father, emigrated from England as a Quaker, seeking the freedom to practice his religion. When he arrived in the colonies, he met Sarah Morgan, a Quaker from Wales. The couple settled down in the Ole Valley in what is present-day Pennsylvania and built a one-and-a-half-story log cabin. The two went on to start a family and would have 11 children, their sixth child being the legendary Daniel Boone, who was born in this house. Here we get the first legend of Daniel Boone. It is said that while he was a young child, he was playing in the woods with some other boys when a panther crossed their path. His friends scattered, but Daniel Boone pulled out his squirrel gun and defended himself against the panther. While this story might be a folktale, we do know for certain what happened next. When Daniel's eldest siblings married non-Quakers, his parents stood by their children's decisions and were expelled from the Quaker community. They packed up their bags and set out for North Carolina and transferred their house to a family member. By the time the house had changed hands to its third owner, nothing of the Boone's original house existed other than the basement. Today, the Daniel Boone Homestead is owned by the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission and is open to the public for tours and historical reenactments. In 1750, the Boones set out on the Great Wagon Road, arriving in what is now Davie County in North Carolina. At the time, the area was untamed wilderness with thick forests full of wild animals. The family built a log cabin and Daniel began learning the trades of his father, weaving and blacksmithing. But the thing he enjoyed the most was hunting, spending days at a time out in the wilderness with nothing but his rifle and the clothes on his back. He would return with enough meat to feed his entire family and animal pelts to sell in town. During this time, Daniel met the love of his life, Rebecca Bryan, whose family were neighbors to the Boones. In 1756, the young couple set out to build their own log cabin along the Yatkin River Valley. Over the following years, the couple would build several more houses up and down the river while having eight kids. At the final log cabin they built, an old friend of Daniel Boone, John Finley, approached him about an opportunity in what is today Kentucky. Richard Henderson, owner of the Transylvania Company, wanted a road cut into the Kentucky Territory, so by extension hired Daniel Boone to do just that. In 1769, Daniel set out with John, crossing the Cumberland Gap and scouting the land. Daniel completed his job and returned to North Carolina in 1773 to bring his family down the Ohio River to create a new settlement. They arrived in 1775 and established an illegal colonial settlement known as Boonesboro. Within one year, the first form of representative government was established at the site and 26 log cabins had been erected. The following year, in 1776, the fort became a pivotal scene for the American Revolutionary War and later withstood the Great Siege in 1778. Fort Boonesboro had gained a reputation of fortification and stood as a safe haven for pioneers heading out west. Travelers could purchase supplies and seek shelter, making it a popular pit stop along the frontier. Though the fort did not survive throughout the years, it was reproduced and is now open to the public as the Fort Boonesboro State Park, where you can see demonstrations by blacksmiths and potters giving you an immersive, period-accurate experience of what life would have been like in the fort. Around 1804, Daniel Boone had grown tired of the legal battles for land rights in Kentucky and moved to the Louisiana Territory, in what is modern-day defines Missouri, to live with his youngest son, Nathan Boone. Nathan had started his house as a humble log cabin, which he quickly replaced with a stone building. The house was considered a mansion on the frontier, sitting in the untamed Missouri wilderness. The floors had been crafted from black walnut and the fireplace mantles had been hand carved on site. Everything had been made by hand on the property. When Daniel arrived with a simple set of tools, he built a blacksmith shop where he could craft his tools, traps, and guns. This allowed the family to flourish on their own, without the need to rely on others. Daniel and Rebecca lived out the rest of their days in this house. Rebecca passed away in 1813 and Daniel passed away in 1820. His death was described as a good death. He had lived a rugged life, every day surviving, and he passed away under the care of his children, comfortable in his own bedroom in a frontier mansion, a luxury he had never known. Today, the Daniel Boone home is open to the public for tours and features historical reenactments set on the grounds where you can explore old shops, workshops, and a church. 
If you would like to see more of this house, but cannot travel, we have a full video tour of it on our channel, co-hosted with award-winning interpreter William Ray. The story of Daniel Boone will live on in American folktales, with these houses standing to serve as a reminder of our nation's humble beginnings. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.